I'm Matt Noble from Gold Derby, joined by the cast and crew from From. And uh, that includes today Harold Pirino, who plays Boyd Stevens, Elizabeth Saunders, who plays Donna. So we've got townspeople and Colony House represented today in the chat, which is great. John Griffin, who's the creator and EP. Jack Bender, who's executive producer and director, directed a lot of the episodes. And Jeff Pinker, showrunner and executive producer. I want to kick things off, guys, by we'll go around this the circle. And I just want to hear from each of you. If you had to write a question about From on a Wall, what question would you write? We'll start with you, Jeff. Start so with me. Uh, yeah. My question would be, my question would be, why am I going first? Um, <laughs> uh, my question would be, how am I going to spend today? Um, do, do you want me to go was, on or should we all throw out our questions and then we can have about, a chat? <laughs> yeah, let's say, uh, yeah, throw so, them out and then we'll have a chat. My question is, why can't Jack Bender direct every episode? That's really what I want to know. That's the question I really would write on the wall. Why can't Jack Bender direct every single episode? The fans and will. by the way, I'll take that compliment, but I will also point out, why did Matt say I only directed one of them? That's exactly <laughs> why. I, <laughs> that's exactly I that why. I even why heard that. that. Matt, that's funny. I thought he said, I thought so he said I, some of them. No, yes, I, Jeff, oh, did you? Yeah. Why it's is Matt putting the this accent, information? That's really what I want to know. <laughs> it's probably the accent. I did say some. <laughs> well, you know what? Um, my question might be, why am I so sensitive? No, but I, but that's <laughs> that's the burden and blessing of, of being an artistic person, which I think everybody on this phone call understands. But I will say, um, how will I enjoy or or um, how will I spend my day first day back being home aside from loving my dogs and my family we learn anything from from jack it can be tricky to get home sometimes so well done <laughs> uh elizabeth yeah. um who am i today John, that set everybody up. <laughs> um, that's a good one. If you got a lot of personalities going well, on, well, you know, like, uh, well, I think people do. I think people have a lot of personalities. <clears throat> I think mine would be why do why do we have to leave after we're done filming? Why can't we just stay there? <laughs> <laughs> I love it there. I know. I know everybody in the show wants to get home. I love that place. So well, I'd like to bring mean. it home with me. That's I right. That's bring, right. Yeah. In fairness, John, no one said you had to leave. You're welcome. A, that is a fair point. Yeah, I, I could have just hung out and I don't know, man. You were on that, you were on that first flight out, boy. So <laughs> ripping, ripping off the band-aid. Had to rip off the band-aid. Matt, I don't want this to be a total love fest because it's not reality, but I will say that the that our crew up there and the world of Halifax, in terms of being a director and a filmmaker and exec producer it couldn't be a more wonderful world. I mean, the, not only from production design to producers, to crew, to everything, and a lot of local actors we found up there, not just in Canada, but also in Halifax. The only thing I would change is make it closer to home. That's it. And, and not be there like we were this year in December, which we yeah. froze our asses off. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I was thinking <laughs> yesterday, Sorry, Sorry, Jack. No, I'm done. Love. I was just, I, I was literally thinking yesterday what I love about shooting out there is you can never get too grand. No one will let you. Everybody is so real out there that if yeah. you had a complex about being a rather grand individual, you would be, t you would just be brought down right away in a good way, not in a bad way. You just have to be real. It's the realest place. Well, part of that, I, I will say part of that is. And and as Jack said, we we we've, we've been gifted with a with a ridiculously talented cast, and many actors for whom this is like their first big, you know, big drama. It's their first big like continuing job. Um, we have a hard time 
pointing the camera at anyone who isn't giving us incredible performances and incredible material. But we're to the to the being there, we're gifted with incredible human beings. And the truth is, Liz, you and Harold keep it real. Like the the what's been amazing is watching a cast of fairly green actors look at at these two and Catalina and Ian and the people that have just more experience and watching their example, which is rare. It, it's not a common thing on a, on a television show, particularly when you pick people up and you basically move them to a really remote location where they're forced to rely on each other. And, and, it's, and it has become about the work and not about diva behavior or it, it's it's just been amazing and it's and it's honestly and i'll say it in this form it's largely because of you too and your leadership and leading by example and on occasion when necessary pulling people aside and having chats which we know has gone on too you and said you weren't the three of us couldn't be more that that. <laughs> <laughs> we hear well, everything and so much of the the shows whatever success the show has is is really due to like everything that that Jeff and Jack just said about, you know, like wh whether it's the crew or whether it's the people in front of the camera, you know, when, when, when you have a show that is so far outside of, you know, reality, um, it takes a really amazing group of people to make it feel real. And whether it's our incredible cast, you know, as Jeff said, you know, headlined by these two beautiful people you see in front of you, or it's Matt Likely and his design team, Right. taking these extravagant ideas and making them feel really grounded and really real. Um, it really does, you know, they say it, it takes a village and, and, and we are very blessed to have a village of, of brilliant people who are just bringing their A game every day to make this feel as grounded and real and visceral as, as possible. Yeah. All right, but now let's get down and dirty. Let's tell yeah, you. Now let's start. Now let's start shit talking. No, each other. no, no. no. <laughs> but I, will say, I will say that when, since, Jeff and John and Epics brought this project to me. And when I first read this brilliantly crazy ass script that John had created with Jeff's leadership, I believe, I know, and development and his team, um, I said to them, you know what? As crazy as this is and as scary as it needs to be, we've got to believe it. And I've learned over the years doing some really good television shows um, is that in large part, that depends on who you cast. So when we first cast Harold, we had our linchpin of a terrific person, somebody we've, Jeff and I have worked with. Um, I won't go through the list, Harold. <laughs> but I will say it started on fame when he was what 17 or no, I was pretty young <laughs> no but I'm not going beyond that but I will say that it really as a director um you really are only as good I think it's like being a conductor you're only as good as your your musicians and we just got starting with Harold and Liz and a bunch of other actors as Jeff said are less experienced we got really fortunate and the three of us, the way John and Jeff and I work, is we're, we're very democratic. And if there's ever a disagreement, which are few and far between, we go two to one, you know, and, and then we, whatever. But we got very lucky with our cast. And a show, I think all great storytelling and television needs to have people you want to spend time with, you care about, and relate to. And we're very lucky with what John writes and what these people, you know, bring to life. I get there to watch. Been, yeah. There have been so many moments where I'll, you know, like like I'll be writing something and I, I will think of the person that's going to deliver it. And just to, to be able to, Jeff and I have talked about this at length. It's like there's 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 nowhere we can ask our actors to go that they won't just be capable and willing to go. You know, and 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 to be able to not have to worry about oh are they are they going to make this moment work is this going to moment moment feel organic it's um you know time after time it's like all right no i know Harold's going to say this and he's going to kill it it's going to it's going to sound just right it's going to feel real and it's just it's such a blessing to be able to to have that to have that safety net as as storytellers and creators 
to know that you know like our cast has our back in terms of the way that they will live in these moments and 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 bring them to the uh, the screen. And Harold, like Harold uh, I was going to say like Harold, like you're someone who's um, had quite a bit of experience in television, but this is your first lead like role like of an ensemble. Um, how what 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 are the challenges or how do you sort of uh, bring that sort of realness to this uh, ensemble and to the your uh, performances, Boyd, in this world of monsters? I mean, like, listen, everybody's saying all the things that, like, I, I won't have anything to add. We've got a bunch of really real people here that we're talking to. We've got Jack and Jeff and John and, like, and Liz. And, like, like Liz said, you can't show up uh, being unreal. It just won't be, it won't be welcome. You won't get the response that you might be looking for. And so you have to sort of bring your authentic self there. And, and so, like, while I, I, they say they... Uh, they, they look to me, I really rely on everyone else that, that I'm working with. I know that when I say the words, the words are going to make sense because John has thought them through and come up with something. And I know that no matter where I go on the screen, that Jack is going to put it together in a way that you're going to believe what just happened there. You know, Jack and Jeff, and they're all going to. And so I start with a lot of trust. I start with my authentic self. I start like looking by, at the, all the authentic people that we have uh, working together with us. And uh, this is real love fest, you guys. I wanted to find something funny and negative to say, but I don't have anything. <laughs> I really don't. Not, not a thing. So, but yeah, it's this whole crew, man. That's what everybody's been saying. So you know, to... you know what I would, you know what I would love to hear, just to follow up real quick. So, uh, Harold, you have mentioned like the 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 as Boyd, the sort of the adjectives, the the truths that you hold at your at Boyd's core. Because I haven't asked this, I would love to, and maybe Jack or John, you guys have, so forgive me. I would love to hear from both you and Liz, what, like, what is the core identity of Boyd or, or Donna? What, what is the truth that you carry as that character? Mm. Well, I know for Boyd, because he's a military man, he spent his whole life in the military. His real, like, his, like, he will live and die for service, like, right? in service of other people more than himself. And, um, and, that's, and that's the core of who, of who Boyd is. Um, his family, his new family that he's found, he is a man of service. And that's what I, that's what I think really sort of holds him together, even in the, in the times when it's really, really tough. You know, that's like, it's, you know, people are born to do things. And I think that's what Boyd is born to do and has been doing it his whole life. And so here, he feels like this is what I have to offer here. And he, he's struggling really hard. Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to be of service when there are monsters. It really is. <laughs> Liz? Elizabeth? Oh, do, 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 do. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I think at the core, she, she is an outsider. She's always been an outsider. And I think she works through that way, which makes her a real individualist. And, um, but I think she cares deeply about people. Um, and I think there's something that she carries with her that is, uh, that she has to own helping people, so keep see, helping people see them. Through. I can't talk all of a sudden. Helping people survive and see their way through. And in her darkness, she's incredibly positive. Like she's always looking for a way she is a person that when she is frightened, will look for a way out. I, I, hearing both of you say this, and, and John, Jack, and I know ultimately you don't exactly where the show is going to end. Hearing both of you say that, I just got chills knowing what we're leading towards eventually. Oh, nice. Are nice. we getting And then you're not going to tell us. None of us. Oh, definitely not going to tell you. because <laughs> why... Come we're on, Matt. Ask Harold. him a question. They can happen. tell us. <laughs> I will, I will give away one thing, and that is that... Uh, I always get nervous when you say that. How do we put Jack on mute? I was going to make a bad joke, but now it's not even worth making. <laughs> you go. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> okay, moving on. Yeah, Liz, you're doing stand-up in the new season. <laughs> Can I get Sean Majumder to help with me? No, 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 you're no. funny. You're I gotta very, find my own. You're very funny. And John gives you a lot of right things to say. 
I yeah, love that. Quote right now, but you know, John's got that humor too. And I, I, will, know. Say, I, love I it. will say one thing, Every we're, we're referring to monsters. And I think one of the things, aside from the fun of our show and the fear of our show, it's scary and all that stuff. And the people who love to put together the puzzle of why and what the hell's going on. And, and John and Jeff have provided that game brilliantly, which I'm not as good at. I'm really good at interpreting and visualizing and and making it seem, making it real. But the whole idea of monsters- we And it's saying, have... wait a minute, explain this to me, please. <laughs> what? You, 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 hold, you hold our feet to the fire in a great way. Well, okay. I, and as, as I, thank you. Um, I, but I, I will say that, yeah, cause it's gotta seem real and gotta seem real within the show that you guys create and I get to interpret um, with our wonderful actors. But I will say it just in terms of the relatability and the fact that we all, God knows in this world today, there are uh, too many monsters, you know? And, and all of us have that aspect. I'll speak for myself inside where you go, okay, that's not where you want to go. And this, you know, and it's, I think that's part of the duality in the battle of being human. And yeah. I think the show taps into that too in a really great way. How do you live your life wherever the hell you are, whatever tree there is you find in your road, how do you live your life in the best possible way? I think we've all got trees in our road. Although I wouldn't do well if I ended up in from. I'd sit there and go, why can't I go out to dinner? <laughs> <I'd be the worst. laughs> I don't want to go to the diner again. <laughs> Although it, it was- call any house. <laughs> There it's okay enough enough for me. It was pretty amazing though in, in filming season one. The night that we were we were um, at the Beaver Bank location, which is where our town is, and there was a storm, and I was leaving set. I get a call from Jack, and I pick up and I say, "Hey," and he's like, "There's a tree in the road," and none of us knew what to do. <laughs> right, we, we couldn't get past it. Tree. Yeah, and I called Jeff. <laughs> and I said, listen, listen, you asshole, if I don't get out of here, you take care of my family. <laughs> and he said he would. Uh, 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 it's interesting, like, Jess sort of highlighted that, like, three of you guys know where this is heading. And you've got a lot of answers that um, maybe Harold and Elizabeth do not have. Uh, what's the relationship right, like between the actors and uh, the powers that be on the show? Um, I, 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 the actors always bugging the producers or uh, creators, uh, like, you know, the writers and stuff for uh, answers? I think uh, Harold and, and Elizabeth can tell me if I'm wrong on this, but we, we do our best not to be assholes about it. Um, and we, you know... Because it's not about, as Jeff often says, like it's not about being cagey. Um, we like to make sure that the actors are as in line with their characters as possible. So um, having them know what their characters know kind of helps us all keep the show very of the moment. Now, when it comes to things that their characters have been through that the audience will not find out until later, that stuff that, you know, like for example, we, uh, we, we talked with Harold early on in season one about what the history was with his wife, because that is something that his character has already been through. And so for him to bring that life to it throughout the season leading up to the final reveal was necessary. But in terms of like, you know, where we, we, we take no pleasure. I, I'm going to speak for myself. I don't think Jack or Jeff do either. We don't take any pleasure in sort of, you know, saying, Oh, well, we know and you don't know it, but it, it's, it's just a matter of like really trying to, a keep things in a in a in a very small box um and also give ourselves room to sort of wander a little bit because as soon as you tell somebody this is going to happen and then you realize oh you know what well maybe we'll go over here first and then we'll come back over here you know you don't want to set up false expectations for for the for the cast either um so that's my very long uh rambling answer to the, to that question 
And and I and I and Jack will have his own. Jack will have a more robust answer to this because he's the one working with the actors every day and blocking the scenes and talking through the emotions of the moments and and as we've said, in, in keeping it real and honest to not only the the world we're trying to create, but their experience as the characters in those scenes. Having said that, the plot is the plot, and as it goes forward, I think what we've been very successful at is building trust between the producers and 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 the actors they know that we're going to we're we're going to a portray them in the best light they they have a safety net in us which makes them willing to take risks i would think and we welcome input as to what their characters are going through and their experience and their ideas for scenes and moments like we're, this is really a, a collaboration this is not a medium that anybody does by themselves and we welcome that we kind of are in control of the story as it goes forward, but this is a partnership. And if we didn't have that trust, um, and John, this is John's first television show, and John is is more available than any other person I've worked with to really like you know spend nights and weekends talking through anything because we want everyone to feel as invested as, as we all are in, in make in doing our best work. I will also add one thing to this, but it won't be robust, but thank you. Um, and that is that John and Jeff are, um, after they invited me to the party, and it's, you know, I, 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 because I invest as much as I do, and because I care desperately about work and things that I attach myself to, I love them. And, uh, as flawed as I may be, or it may be, or whomever. But the fact is, is that I think that it's, it's, they are very flexible in when they write something, you know, they write about, you know, a little, uh, a little leaf that they find or something. And Harold's walking in the woods and he pokes his foot on the leaf. This is a bad metaphor. They do much better. I'm simply saying that when they write stuff, that I attach myself to, which we won't mention this season what it was. And I say, we, let's, we got to go further with this. And they will embrace that when it's a good idea. And sometimes it's not. They will embrace that. And suddenly, you know, it's like skiing down a hill, which I don't do very well. But when you go off, you're going through the solemn and then you go off into the woods. They will go off into the woods and find great stuff. And the actors will you know, realize it and bring it to life. But that's a real gift for a director, exec producer, when you are working, partnering with people who you can bring stuff to the show that doesn't always fall into your job description. And well, these, yeah. And we we really do just to add one final uh, one final bit we we you know Jeff Jeff said this at the very beginning and, it, and it's something we we really try to embrace is that the best ideas can come from anywhere, right? You know? And, and we, we this this is not a place like we we really try to work without ego um, on the show and really in service of the show. And when you know when it comes to our relationship with with the with the cast, you know we really do look at it as like as Jeff said as as like a partnership. It's like yes, the baby has been born. You know, we we birthed the baby, but now we're raising it together. You know, the, the 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 partnership of raising this character together to see what kind of person it's going to become is something that is very alive and important in in conversations with, you know, these these people that are are embodying these these characters and bringing them to life. To to really have that be an ongoing and organic conversation between you know writer and and actor. Here's one thing I, I wonder though about. I just wonder about this because I never, I never asked. Do you guys get a lot of calls from the other actors? Like, hey, am I dying? Like, does it happen a lot? You're the only one. You're the only one that doesn't call. You're I'm the only. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> we, I, I have not, I have not fielded any "Am I dying?" calls. Oh, okay. um, I think that I think everybody's afraid to like. Well, yes. <laughs> you are now. Don't ask a you question are. you don't want to know the answer to. <laughs> right, right. I got it. Got it. Got it. I, I have developed a very. I, I spend a lot of time on set, so I've developed a very good poker face. Um, I uh, have, yes, you have. This is know, true. I have you a know. lot of theories floated my way, to which I always respond, "Huh." 
<laughs> and then I walk away. <laughs> that's, that's true. But yeah. that's part of the actually that's part of the the great thing that we feel that we can come to you guys and say things and present ideas that we're like, isn't this? Because you respond in such a way that you're not giving us a yes or a no, but you never make us feel like you're tossing it in the garbage and going, oh, what a difficult actor. Right, right. This is true. Yeah. True. So we, we right. have great, uh, great uh, communication, in my view, between yeah. uh, writers, directors, producers, actors, that we can we can communicate with one another. Yeah. Very human. Uh, as, Very human. As Jack said, he and I have worked on shows together and and you realize no matter how passionate you can possibly be about the thing you're making there's only so many hours in the day and to have other really smart really human people who are shockingly gifted also focusing on the same set of questions they're going to come up with new ideas that you just wouldn't possibly you wouldn't occur to you so we'd be We'd be, you know, it'd be ridiculous for us not to welcome ideas from this group of people who are, are, you know, what, the the other thing which I can say with sincerity is Harold, Elizabeth, they don't show up to set thinking like, how can I make myself look good? They show up to set thinking, how can I make the other person I'm playing this scene with look good? And that is not a, that is not a given. That is not a constant, and that makes it so. That that's where the communication and the trust develops is when everybody's looking out for each other and not just themselves. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening in our little town. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's our. I think this cast. We don't discuss this, but it it feels like on set that people really come from the place of it's my job to tell the story. It's not my job to showcase me or showcase you. It's my job is to tell the story. I think that's true, which is why also directorially, as much as I will say there was a design and a style to this show, I'm not a big believer in style over content, Matt, but I do believe that everything has to look like it should, you know, whether it's a painting or whatever it is. And, you know, when I used to do a bunch of different shows in my younger days and bounce around my objective was always to walk onto that show and do the best goddamn episode of that show I could do. And certainly having done Alias a lot with Jeff, having done The Sopranos and going from Alias to The Sopranos, wow, clearly you can't have two very different looking universes, right? And, and of course they're gonna look different. They're not gonna look like some movie I invented. They're going to look like the best episode of that show. And I think that everybody, myself included, really keeps saying, okay, we established this world. How do we keep it alive visually? How do we keep it alive in terms of performance? Obviously, there's a balance. These two actors are incredibly real and subtle. And that's the barometer for the show. You know, it's not a showy, showy show. From my point of view or the actors, it's really... How do we tell this crazy ass story that we really believe in, in the most honest possible way and still give it that little bit of alchemy, you know, that little bit that makes it different than everything else. Yeah. And I think Jack, like you're right. You don't want style over substance, but style can serve the substance and serve the story that you're, that you're telling. And that's a very important thing. Um, you're all being very lovely, but uh, Jack is, uh, was Harold uh, more difficult to direct in Lost or From? more difficult yeah which one was he more difficult in well i would say that no i i could make a joke but i'm not going yeah, to yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. make a joke so, that's right, make the joke <laughs> what, i want to hear the joke he's, <laughs> uh, he's always been difficult he's <laughs> but, no i will i will say though um that we were at a different point in our lives harold and his mine and mine jeff and his and uh, John wasn't born yet. Uh, that's, <laughs> um, Liz was only a toddler. But <laughs> I, I, I will say that um, Harold has always been exceptional. Great to work at. From the time I worked with him when he was 19, 18, 17, <laughs> yeah. was, to, to now. And what amazed me about the when we started the pilot, the first episode of From, I hadn't worked with you, Harold, since 
Lost or The Tempest? Did The Tempest precede Lost? The Tempest preceded Lost, yes. Yes, thankfully. <laughs> yes. But yes, okay. But nevertheless, <laughs> I, I was amazed. You know, it's like, this sounds pretentious, but it's like, you know, what are those violins? Are they Stradivariuses, whatever they are that, you know, have been played since Mozart. And they're these extraordinary aged musicians. No, no, instruments, instruments. sorry. Yeah, yeah. But, I was just watching Harold in it was the scene where he first shows up to talk to his son after Donna says doesn't want him at Colony House and he goes up to reach out to him in his studio where he lives. And it's very awkward and the amount of subtle pain that he was projecting in these little moments. Uh, on his face, in his eyes, on the way he moved his body and wanted to reach out and hug him, but knew he couldn't. It was so complex and rich that I went, oh my God, he's always been great, but like a great instrument, he's only gotten richer. And I think that's wow. really true. And this right, is my, yes. it's true. I hear, that, I hear a lot of compliments, but all I'm hearing is Harold got old. <laughs> <laughs> like well, an old Italian Stradivarius. <laughs> I will say something. I will say something about that because I've gotten a little older too. But I actually believe that if you stay passionate and if you're really good to begin with, you let go of all the shit you did when you were younger and the pain in the ass that you could have been. God knows, Pinkner, I worked with you and you were impossible. <laughs> I, uh, never. But I, but I think that speaking for myself, not that this is about me, but I will say that I do believe you get better if you stay passionate you, and, and you become a better person and your wife becomes a rabbi and all, <laughs> all the things that happen to us in life, if we're fortunate enough to grow and have good experiences, you really do get better, even though Hollywood, you know, the obsession about youth and all that stuff in our culture, but you really, you really do get better. And Harold was always great to work with, but as an artist, as an instrument, he's only gotten richer. Yeah, and, well, and I'm going to have to say the Harold, same thing. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, Harold, you, no, 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 you it's, have it's the right true. reply. And, Has and, Jack also gotten better? No, listen, and he asked me if, if the Tempest preceded Lost. And you, you know how I can tell. It's just, and, and the Tempest was, was great. And we have Peter Fonda and all these like great, great actors uh, on the show. Um, 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 but, and I don't know, Jack, have you seen the Tempest ever? Uh, only when I, I never see anything after I've made it and it's out in the world. I don't. Oh. I never have. You but, and I but, should screen it. We, <laughs> we should. But, but I know from working with him, just the, just the kind of information that I get from him as a director, each time it gets better and better and better. And that's how I know. Like I remember what The Tempest was and I remember I'll Fly Away. I remember all those things. And then Lost, it turned up a little bit. And Jack here the genius that's happening when Jack is directing, and you can see between each of the uh, other directors, and this is not to say we don't have great directors, we really, really do. We have great directors, but the, the difference in the subtlety and the, and the brilliance that Jack brings to each one of the episodes that he directs, uh, his, his, growth is his growth as an artist is really, really palpable. It's, re it's right there on the screen. That's why I said I wish he could direct them all because it, 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 it is like, if you call me a Stradivarius, then I'd have to call you uh, Yo-Yo Ma, even though he plays, you know, uh, <laughs> the cello. But that, you know, the great kind of artist that can actually bring to life whatever uh, those instruments uh, have to offer. That's what Jack Bender is doing in well, ways now that he I, I'm, I'm, now that surpassed everything that we've done before. Really. I'm humbled and slightly embarrassed by that review. And I uh, <laughs> and and. I'm so glad you've become my manager. But, <laughs> but I will say over the years, the one, the one thing I've learned, uh, and there are many, is you only need to tell, you only need to reach out to an actor and give a note or do this when, when you need to. In other, in a, at other times, just shut up and say thank you. And, and that's something you learn. I, I certainly have. I used to be yakking. Well, I'm yakking a lot here, but with actors, 
you know, tell every flick of the eyebrow, I'd give a note. I mean, it was ridiculous. And uh -huh. so you do learn how to let go and trust other people, which Jeff was talking about, whether it's your DP, your crew, everybody, you know, you just need to let people be great. And mostly they will be. It's interesting, Jack, you talking about the notes and then not the notes, because I yeah. find there are times when Jack is directing, it's almost like being included in a dance, if that makes sense. It's because Jack, you can see his brain dancing in his body to come through and you, and you just kind of move, you get brought into it. Like, it, I know that sounds crazy. And this is the person that says, who am I today? But um, I do see things that way. Like I, I see that there's something so intrinsic in what Jack is thinking and expressing that it's amazing to watch. It's been delightful to watch Jack show up without an idea. Like he's done his homework and he and he knows the set and he knows the scene and he knows its place in the story and he knows its place in the larger story. He knows where the characters are coming from. But he'll come with an idea, but he's not trying to impart it on anyone. He'll walk on, he'll walk on set and he'll go, so what do you guys think? Is always the first thing. And it becomes very organic. And you know, partly it's because over time he's, you know, very quickly an incredibly steep learning curve, learned to trust you guys and the rest of our cast. And it really does, it, it, it does form organically. So by the time, and then, and then Jack will bring the, the DP and the, the cameraman into it and go, okay, what do you guys think? And it really is, you know, it, it's, it's a collaboration, but, but Jack, and Jack is very comfortable going, well, no, I think this, but not until necessary. You know, it's, 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 it's not like everybody looking to Jack for the idea. It really is a, a collaboration with Jack steering the ship. I I'll so just want to say one thing, and that is that, John, excuse me, yeah, but no, no. I got to just go back to you and Jeff and say, you know what, guys, the, you, you, you can be a really good chef and cook a really good meal, but if you don't have the recipe, if you don't have, you know, the cliche of the play is the thing, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's the material you're bringing to life with the actors. And if it isn't on the page, and if it isn't rich, and, and having been on the set with John many times where I go, you know, this blah, 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 blah. And he will spontaneously, because he also has been an actor. And between all of us here, he wants to act again. Um, <laughs> but Just I, between us, nobody <laughs> else. <laughs> and a hundred hundred thousand other people who are going to. Uh, uh, if I anybody told, has a script that they want to send in for Jack to perform in, or if there's any roles, feel free. I'll give out his, I'll give out his email address at the end of this. <laughs> no, I, but I really do believe it. It really does have to start with the material, and and you guys create really rich rich really smart scripts that we get to you know put on film or yeah. video or whatever it is these days so that's where it starts well and just stepping out from like a like a, a thirty thousand foot perspective too because like i like everyone else here has has been have had the privilege and, and like been fascinated to watch jack work on set but also like i always think of two like uh, one of the reasons the three of us, I think, work really well together and 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 the and the different things that we bring to the recipe, as Jack said, is that like I remember when we were when we were first talking about what this show was gonna look like. And Jack said, Yeah, let's 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 not do establishing shots. And I said, What do you mean we're not gonna do establishing shots? That's it's TV, you do establishing shots. It's like, yeah, 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 no, no, no. They're they're bullshit. Let's just let's just like let's let's do the scene. I'm paraphrasing, maybe I threw in the bullshit, but he said, you know, like we really want this to feel like we're with the characters and establishing shots are going to take it out of it. So I said, all right, well, we'll get rid of all the establishing shots. And, you know, it's amazing how much of a, how, how much of an imprint that has had on the show. He also said early on, you know, we're going to film this so that there's always like a, an empty part of the frame, you know, like, like whenever, whenever we're filming, we're going to see, um, you know, we're, we're going to have the scene playing out, but we're never going to play characters character center there's always going to be an empty part of the frame because that negative space is where our fear lives and and it's just so subtle and so elegant and has become such a piece of the language of the show 
you know, I, I have learned more as, as a visual storyteller from working with Jack than, you know, I, any other, any other experience I've had, um, you know, one conversation with Jack is like a month of film school. So we, uh, you know, I, I, for one, as Jeff said, this is, this is my first show. I feel incredibly lucky and fortunate to have, you know, found this, this amazing recipe that the three of us have together. Somehow this feels like it, it's become like a uh, like a, a, a Jack Bender Celebration Society, and it is. Matt, you're failing at your job because we're like 42 minutes into this, and you haven't complimented or asked Liz a question about her facility with with curse words. Because that's <laughs> all. <laughs> Well, yeah. look, look, uh, Elizabeth, do you want a quick comment on your uh, on your facility with curse words? Well, you got a sailor's mouth. Um, yeah, Donna just, feels so I far. Will tell you, Donna I'm feels so I, far different. Donna feels so unlike you as a human being. Well, you know, it was this was a nice compliment. Actually, COVID testing gave me the other day. I came in and they said you're like the Clark Kent of the cast. Donna, Donna Superman, and then you come in, and you're Clark Kent, and I was like, hey, I like that, I like that, because I don't actually know, I don't really think about it if I'm different, but I'm kind of going, oh, except I go, Donna's a lot bolder than I am, but I swear like Donna. Well, I swear so much, but so when my husband swear, swore once in front of my child, who was three, she said, daddy, you can't say that word. That's money. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't, oh yeah, John, just a quick thing. Yep. Oh yeah, no, yeah. I, I was going to say just a heap and appropriate amount of praise on uh, Liz Saunders. Um, you know, Jack was talking about his observations of Harold in the pilot, which, which were absolutely spot on. One of the things I always think of with Liz is that monologue that she has uh, with Tabitha in episode two. Because, you know, from a writing standpoint, I, I grew up, you know, I grew up reading Eugene O'Neill and Sam Shepard and like, like, I, I, I tend to monologue sometimes, you know, in, in my writing. And, and we try to always earn those monologues where they happen. But there was a little bit of uncertainty as to how monologues like that were going to play um, in a show like this. And, and I remember, you know, the three of us were talking about, well, do we cut away? Do we have, you know, the, do, do we have flashback shots of this story that Donna is telling? And the instinct was just like, no, let's, let's just like, let's, let's sit on Donna. And to watch Elizabeth Saunders deliver that monologue is quite, is one of the most mesmerizing um, parts of, of, of season one. And, th and that was the moment where we kind of said, yeah, this is going to work. We can do this. We we can we can do this in TV, and and it's going it's going to be okay. Because it, it was just like it was so captivating, so rich, and it would have been a sin to take the camera off her. You know, it's well, also, I, it's no, also I'm just going to throw in one thing about Catalina, yeah. who isn't with us, and who was your partner in the scene, yeah. and you were. That monologue was brilliant, and it was long for television. And it yeah, was. And I was shitting bricks because it was a day of shooting for me. Donna's here. And I was sure you were going to fire here. me. No, but I'll tell you something. You know, and and with your partner Catalina, who just listened, and was brilliant as a sounding board for your monologue and her reactions. It's it's an exceptional, great scene. Yeah. Well, I'll be done in a minute. I'll be right out. My yeah. wife wants well, to know if I'm going to feed the tortoise. Can you believe yeah, well, it? Go, well, Jack, uh, no better way to end than sending Jack off to feed his tortoise. Um, thank you guys, <laughs> guys for going. your time. Season two is coming 2023. Best of luck with all the award nominations down the pipeline. And um, hey, watch this interview. Get a gold derby.com. Thank you so much for your time, everyone, today. Thank, so you, much fun. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 B